hello welcome to white threads floss tube number 107 thank you so much for joining me today again I apologize for it being a while since the last video I've been very busy I had a class on the weekend um, here in Walker which was lovely and I had been getting ready for that class writing the notes and also last week there was a chance that because there was a little bit of sickness going around quite close to me that I could have got sick so I panicked and thought what do I do how can I teach a class if I'm sick so I spent the week before the class videoing me stitching the project so there's a very good chance that after the craft show, which is coming up soon, has happened, I will have the chance to actually sit down and make that into an online class for everyone to be able to access if they would like to. Um, yes, so that was one good thing that came out of the panic about people being sick around me and therefore I might have gotten sick too, which I didn't, thank goodness. Um, so yes, um, on the weekend I had the frizzy and white work. Uh, tree of life class and I had four students in the class there were meant to be five but unfortunately one was not able to get out of jury duty um, but we had a lovely time together it was cold here in Walker there's been rumors all weekend of it starting to snow here this week and I don't think it's going to it's not that cold um, and it's not like today's the day and it's not snowing it's not going to but it was a bit of a wild night and we had a tree come down last night so I need to go and sort that out later on and there was a tree down in our neighbor's yard up the back as well so yeah a bit happening around here um, so yeah I had the class it was great um, and that uh, when I have classes I always ask the students in the classes what uh, what would you like to do in a future class if you were to come back and so uh, they actually requested Hardanger and I haven't taught an in-person class in Hardanger here yet and I've got some ideas for this so keep an eye out that may happen in the future it also may not because you know sometimes I get led up little side paths and never come back to original ideas but hopefully it will so anyway as I mentioned before the craft show the Sydney craft and quilt fair is coming up very soon it's at the end of this month um, what are the actual dates I don't know something like the 29th or something rather of June till about the 3rd of July anyway it's a Wednesday through to a Sunday uh, it hasn't run for the last two years because of COVID so this is finally our chance to get back to Sydney and and have a craft show so that's a little bit exciting it's going to be at a new venue previously it was at the ICC in Darling Harbour which turned out which was a new build um, prior to that we were at at White Bay at Balmain and uh, that was a lovely venue because the the ceilings had light coming through from above ICC turned out to be a really dark and horrible venue and I I and many others did not like it at all so they've moved it and it's going to be at the Sydney showgrounds um, out at Homebush and that will be an exciting new venue I hope it works really well for us all so for the craft show I always like to have new things well I'm gonna have my new book which is now a year old but there will be some of you that have not yet seen all of the projects from the book so I will have all of them on display um, there are going to be a, new, a few new products that I will have. So I recently got a shipment of some new Sotima linen and this is a beautiful fine weave linen. It, it looks a little bit um, see-through here but it's not really. And my thought for that sort of linen is that it would be beautiful for doing monograms on. So if you were to do say a monogrammed cushion or handkerchiefs or anything else with a monogram that would be beautiful fabric to work on um, so I will have that and there will be some other things as well still trying to work through what I've got that I have stock of because we are still having supply chain issues so yeah I will be able to take what I can take but yeah 
<laughs> it's frustrating for all of us. Uh, so I know that you as customers are frustrated and I as someone who wants to sell these products is also frustrated. And the people who are supplying them to me are probably frustrated than the manufacturers are also probably frustrated. This just the way things are, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, craft show coming up, which will be exciting with new products. So, I th oh yes, there was one other thing. I was just thinking, what else was there that I wanted to say? Um, in my class on the weekend, I discovered that some people were having difficulty finding the ends of these little rolls of London Dairy Linen Thread. So I've actually uh, filmed a little video of how to find the end. It's really quite easy when you know how, and if you don't, then you don't. So I thought, well, I'll share that with you. When you're working with London Dairy Linen Thread, sometimes it can be hard to find the end to start with the easiest way and i can see it's up here is to pop out the end of the spool and a lot of people don't even know that that can happen and then pull on your threads that are tucked in there oh this was supposed to work a lot easier than this <laughs> and there we are that's the end come out it's also pulled out the inner end so i'll just trim that off and um, start working with this one but a lot of people don't know that the ends can pop out the other end can pop out as well so when you're finished with your thread finished cutting off the bit that you want you can slip it back in there click it off and then trim there and the whole thing won't still keep coming undone so i hope that was helpful just a little tip to help you along thanks so much for joining me today and i'll see you next time bye